Now we are covering uh, section 6.4, configuring a Cisco router of chapter 6 and network layer. Now, configuring router configuration steps, the first thing we need to configure is assign a device name. Why do we not want to assign the names? Well, imagine you have five routers. If every router is called router, 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 you, you won't even know which router you are configuring. So to distinguish which router you are configuring, you give it a name. Now the name is locally significant only. It doesn't You can have all the routers with the same name, but it's just for you to differentiate what router you are configuring. Then we have to configure the password, so set password. Secure privilege exec mode access using the enable secret command. For example, if somebody is in user mode and they type enable, they will get to the privilege mode. You want to secure that. You just don't want anybody to type enable and get to the privilege mode. So you give a password. You need to give a secret password. And then secure exec mode using the login command on the console port and the password command to set the password. Now, for example, uh, this is to secure... Uh, if somebody puts a, a console cable on your router, you want to give a password, so they have to... Uh, I they have to give a password to be able to connect to the router. You don't want to, as soon as they put the console cable, be able to access the router. Then that's local. If you if they are accessing the router remotely, then obviously we have to configure the VTY ports passwords. Then uh, these passwords, not the secret. Secret is always encrypted. But the login password, line passwords, are not encrypted by default. So you want to uh, enable a service called password encryption which is a global configuration command that will prevent password from displaying the plain text. It will encrypt them. Okay, the encryption is very weak, but there is small encryption. Provide the legal notification using the banner, message of the day, MOTD, global configuration command. Now, um, this is important. You have to give it banners to your routers. You have to, for example, provide the legal uh, information or notification. So, for example, if somebody tries to hack to your router, and has access to the router and you caught that person and you take him to the court and the person is going to say, well, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. I couldn't connect to his router. That's that's the reason why you are giving this notification. You're saying, okay, well, only authorized users and uh, unauthorized users are, will be prosecuted and so on. Now, important thing about the banner. So more, many companies, they go through the lawyers and how what to put on the banner. It's important. One important, very important thing is do not use a welcome in words. Don't say welcome. Because if you say welcome, then you can't prosecute anyone. Because the word welcome says, okay, you are invited. Then uh, save the configuration. Use uh, the copy uh, run to start or start to run. Um, uh, co copy run to start. We want to copy the running configuration to startup configuration. And then we use the show running config to verify the running configuration. The interfaces or LAN interfaces, we need to uh, configure them. If you want to access to the LAN local network, uh, we give an IP address, including the subnet mask. And uh, after we have uh, given an IP address and subnet mask, we have to uh, activate the interfaces. By default, all the interfaces on the router, sorry, are off by default. And interfaces on the switch by default are on, up. So on the router, you have to do no shutdown to bring the interfaces up. The interfaces, you do want them to be activated. The interfaces on the switch, for example, the ones that you have no connection to, or there's no PCs connected to that port, shut them down. You have to go in there and say shut down. But on the router, again, remember, they are down by default. You have to activate them with the command no shutdown on the interfaces that you want to be activated. Okay, we're gonna see a small demonstration on the configuring a Cisco router. So set up a topology and initialize the devices. Configure the device and verify the connectivity. Display the device information. Okay, again, I'm gonna do it on the GNS. Okay, this is our uh, network here. Um, the router R1, so I'm gonna just shrink a little bit so we can see it. This is R1. Okay, um, just gonna see the network as well, that's a network. Okay, so first I'm going to see if there is any configuration. So show, uh, I can do show running config, config. Let's see if there's any configuration there. 
No. Uh, there is uh, the line configuration. So show IP interface brief. No configuration there. Okay, so again, it's my thing. Learn how to do all the configuration on the notepad. I know in the beginning it will be really challenging and you have to remember the commands and so on, but it's going to be a life savior if you do it in the, in the notepad, uh, relatively speaking. Now, you, all you can do is write in the notepad, then you can copy and paste him on the router. Now, imagine that you've been working for two, three hours. And if you have not done it in the notepad, it's like no way you're going to remember what you did three hours ago. But if you do it in the notepad, you can always come back and say, okay, well, in the beginning I was doing this, there, I made a mistake and so on. So it's good for troubleshooting tool as well. So the first command that we have to do is because we, we would be on the, on the user mode, on this mode. We want to get from the user mode into privilege mode, this mode. So the first command that we have to do is enable. That will move us from the user mode to the privilege mode. Now, in the enable on the or privilege mode, we can't really do any configuration. We can see everything. We at the moment you can see here that's that's the name of the router R1. I don't want you to concentrate on the name. This mode is more important. Now this mode is privilege mode. We can view pretty much everything here, but there's not much configuration happening here. So to configure, we need to move to another mode. So configuration mode, global configuration mode by typing configure terminal. Okay, now what we would be, we are at the global configuration mode. So the first thing, I'm just going to divide that so we know, okay, we are in another mode. The first thing we want to do in this mode is give it a name on the, on the router, for example, for identification. The command starts with the host name, host name. Then we want to call it whatever we want, flow, uh, one, r1, one, for example, and so on. Okay, for our example, r1. We have our one or two in our labs, but usually we would call like that, like I said, flow one or uh, I don't know, management router or uh, middle room PC router two or some whatever. The name will make a sense where the router is located, but we call our one here. Okay, the next thing is we want to do on this mode, we want to enable uh, a secret. For example, any anybody types enable, we want them to be challenged with a password or with a secret uh, password. So enable, as soon as somebody types enable, we want to use secret. And in the Cisco world, when we're learning, all we use two passwords. We use Cisco or class. Don't use any other password for learning purposes only. On the real life, on the on the live production network, oh no no, use a very very strong password, like minimum eight characters, combination uh, upper cases, lower cases, numbers, and so on. Okay, so Cisco, and then um, after this we have to um, encrypt some of the passwords. So uh, enable, uh, no sorry, service password encryption. Service password encryption is going to encrypt all the passwords that they are decrypt. They are uh, clear text by default. For example, the enable secret password is, is encrypted anyway. Default encryption. Uh, it will be encrypted. Some of the passwords like line password, uh, console or VTY line passwords, they will be uh, on the clear text. We can encrypt those passwords. And uh, another one, no IP domain lookup. What this command is going to do is, uh, in case you make a mistake, a spelling mistake, uh, it's going to uh, not search the domain for that uh, spelling mistake you created. Um, if you do a spelling mistake and you don't have this command, uh, the computer is going to think, that okay, well, he's trying to tell net to blah, blah, blah. You think you have misspelled and it's gonna, you're going to be waiting there for a long time until it realizes there is no blah, blah, blah on your network. Okay. Um, then I'll move to the uh, line. So line uh, console zero. This is uh, when somebody puts a, a console cable on your router. We want to give them a, to be challenged with a password. So password Cisco or class. Let's use class here. Password class. Um, so 
they need to use the password class uh, once they log on or once they put the, the console cable in. Uh, login. So login says, okay, I'll use this password that I just typed to uh, as a login because it, the passwords could be located somewhere else as well. So in this case, we are using this password here. And um, exec timeout, I usually like this exec uh, timeout zero zero, which means uh, don't time us out. If if we are idle for so and so many minutes, don't time us out. By default, it's ten minutes. If you don't touch the keyboard on the router for ten minutes, it's gonna log you out. This says uh, well, uh, never log us out. So zero minutes and zero seconds, it never logs us out. Default is ten. Now, in the production network, you will use five, for example, five minutes or even less. Uh, the router should log you out if there's nothing, if nobody has touched the keyboard. Then uh, uh, login sync that says that it's going to synchronize our logins. So in case the router has some kind of display, it's just going to spit out that display. It's going to give you that uh, that notification. And if you were typing in the meantime something, then it's going to just throw you out. So this is going to synchronize, it's going to keep in the memory what we would type in, give us the message, then display what we were typing before. The next section that we go to is a line VTY 0 to 4. And again, with somebody remotely telnet or SSH to our network, to our router, then we want to be them to be challenged with the password. So password again, class here, and login. I could use exact timeout here as well, but not recommended at all in here. Okay, the next thing you do is the banner. So banner, MOTD. So banner was the notification for uh, to warn people that only authorized users they can, they can come in. The banner, uh, you can get great banners, uh, really like uh, inventive banners and so on. Uh, the banner has to start with the key and finish with the same key, right? So for example, say that I start with a, a dollar sign here. The This will continue. This will be my banner until I put the dollar sign again, okay? So I'll say authorized users only, right? And then I have to finish it with a dollar sign as well, right? So I started with dollar sign and I have to finish it with dollar sign. The, I can put uh, whatever I want here until the router sees the dollar sign, that's your banner until it sees the dollar sign. So for that reason, don't start with something like, okay, I'll start with you. Because if you start with you, then the router sees a you here as well. It says, okay, well, the banner is authorized. So it just says authorized. So always start the banner with some character that is not gonna appear on your banner. The last thing that we wanna do is, uh, we want to copy this uh, configuration in the from running config to the startup config. So copy running config to startup config, right? I can type it like this, all of it, or just so it doesn't appear so I can like this. It appears on the same line. Okay, um, the banner banner is on the, on the global configuration mode, yeah? So I can copy this and stick it here. All this configuration that we did here is a global configuration mode configuration. So host name, it's a globally takes effect on the router. Uh, enable secret, globally takes effect on the router. Service password, global, every password will be encrypted. The no IP domain lookup is a globally affected command. And then the banner, obviously. And then these stones are just like uh, more specific commands. What else we have to do? We have to give it an, uh, okay, uh, let's just copy this and see if everything is working and then we can do the rest. So highlight all of this, right click, copy, go to my router. So I'm just gonna maximize it a little bit and clear the text. Control E S will clear the screen on the secure CRT. And then uh, just I don't need to do anything. Just right click here, and it will paste all my configuration. So you can see enable there, configure terminal, uh, host name, secret, the password encryption, domain lookup, the banner worked correctly. So it says enter text message end with the character 
dollar sign because they sell dollar sign there. And then the my console. So I'm going to copy running configuration to the startup config. Obviously, here is not going to work. That is a good invalid input detected at the marker because I can't copy from the global configuration mode. So I have to go to the privilege mode first by typing end. And now I can copy the configuration, that command there. So copy, right click, that's it. Okay, now, okay, it says error opening because it's, it's a GNS. So I, I go back to my notepad and I say, okay, well, there was an error here, so I had to put end, right? So in the future, I'll know that, okay, well, I had to put the end there. Okay, I make a small division there. Now I need to do, what I need to do is uh, configure my uh, interfaces. So if you look at here, um, these are my interfaces. So 192.168.11.1 and 192.168.12.0 on this side, on this interface. Okay, so I'll open my notepad again. And I'm in the privilege mode now, right? So what I need to do, I need to go to the global configuration mode. So I type configure terminal. And then I have to go to the more specific interface configuration mode. So interface, interface FA00, give an IP address. So IP address 192.168.11.1, subnet 255.255.255.0. Okay, let me just widen this even more now. Okay, and then no shutdown, no shutdown, because by default they are down interfaces on the router. The next interface that I have is uh, FA001. So I'll make a small division there. So exclamation mark will, will not have, have effect on the router when it's reading the, this copy and paste commands. But for me, for, for my configuration, it does make sense quite a lot by, by separating the commands. So now the next interface, so interface FA01. And then I'm making a space here, as you can see, a small space, because I know all these commands are like children or child commands of this parent command. That's more like in programming. So when we do IP address for this, 192.168.12.1 and 255.255.255.0 and no shutdown. Right. This is your configuration for the IP4 addresses. And um, okay, let's just copy all these again and paste them to the router. So highlight all of that, copy, go to secure CRT. Again, let me just make some space and right click. Okay, I can see that there's no any errors. So great, it's working very good. Configure terminal, so the given IP addresses, no shutdown. And I'm getting some messages saying the interface FA00 change state to up and 01 change state to up. That's a status. And the protocol is change state to up as well. Excellent. Okay, so the next thing is uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, give an IPv6 as well address. So interface, interface FA00, IPv6 address. Uh, 201 db8 164 colon colon 64 now that's it enter no shutdown if i want and uh, for ipv6 i can give a link local address as well ipv6 address uh, fe80 colon colon one and this is a link local address now the powerful of of uh, a notepad is just you can copy and paste it right and just change bits these the notepad speeds up things so fa01 db9 here we have and the link local can be the same as well so highlight all of these two right click copy and paste them excellent and and we can view everything. So show running config, or you can just do show run. It's faster. Show run. Okay. So let's see. 
from here we can see the service password encryption is working host name is changed to r1 this is our secret which is cisco but it's been hashed uh, what else can we see here uh, no ip domain lookup that configuration we did uh, what else interface fa00 has got an ip address that we have given has got an ipv6 address link local address and ipv6 uh, global unicast address same for ip or similar for ip uh, interface fa01 um, banner authorized users only this is our banner uh, and then we have a console and vty passwords and other configuration to test our banner so let's just go exit so now when we press return we see our banner this is our banner authorized users only so okay so uh, this was uh, class class as you can see it doesn't say it doesn't uh, when I put the password now I'm typing but you can't see anything you can't it, the, it doesn't has like an asterisk or something uh, for security reasons okay so class again class there we go I'm straight in the privilege mode okay um, hopefully that's uh, been uh, interesting for you uh, you learned something so um, in this uh, summary we have learned on the chapter 6 we have learned the network layer the OSI layer 3 that provides the services to allow end devices to exchange data across data across the network the network layer uses four basic processes uh, to to have information sent from one network to another network we need the IP addressing of end devices we need to encapsulate we need to route the packet and then in the other side will de-encapsulate the packets the internet is largely based on IPv4 which is still the most widely used network layer protocol, but it's been replaced with IPv6 because we are running out of IPv4 addresses. IPv4 packets contains an IP header and a payload. The IPv6 simplified header offers several advantages of IPv4, including better routing efficiency, simplified extension header, and capability for peer flow processing. Thank you for watching my video. Uh, please look at other videos and hopefully you will uh, learn a lot more. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next future videos. Bye.